name, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Oh, how long? All the day long. All the day long. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let us pray. <laughs> Let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for another day, a day to give thanks for all your many blessings and mm -hmm. to thank you for bringing us together one more time to share the many ways to tame the tongue. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Even when we sin by gossiping, help us to see this sin for what it, it is, hateful, hateful, and ultimately sin that separates us from you. Yes. Lord, give us a greater affection for you and help us to love you so much that it spills over in everything we do and everyone we meet. Help us, Lord, to love you so much that the temptation to gossip melts away in the midst of our mm. fruitfulness and joy. Yes. Help us long to build others up, not tear them down. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 And I have a devotional that I would like to share. It, um, reminded me of, it reminded me of what we discussed last week, the slandering tongue, but it also fits to the gossiping tongue. And the title is mean, mean Girls, and it's from a devotional called uh, titled um, A Little God Time for Women. It comes from the scripture, 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3. It says, Joy, I'm sorry, before you read it, yes, uh, Minister Larry, please forgive me, but there is a noise going on, and maybe we should ask everybody to Mute their phones until Joyce asks you to unmute it. Okay. Because it's, it's annoying and it's not allowing us to hear her clearly at okay. time. Yes. Thank you so much for allowing me to do that. Yes, okay. thank you, Margaret. So if we okay. all would mute, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, again, it's entitled Mean Girls, and it's from a devotional title a little god time for women but of course this is also for men it, and we the scripture is first peter 2 1 through 3 get rid of your feelings of hatred don't just pretend to be good be done with dishonesty and jealousy and talking about others behind their backs now that you realize how kind the lord has been to you put away all evil deception envy and fraud Long to grow up into the fullness of your salvation. Try this for this, try, cry for this as a baby cries for his milk. Mean girls, we have all met them, been them, or been hurt by them. Women don't have to wonder much about the definition of this term because we coined it. Somewhere along the way, we got the idea that putting another woman down would elevate us. Whether we criticize her appearance, her personality, or her situation, 
we are somehow under the impression that we will improve as she deteriorates. Each moment you're tempted to put down another woman, try raising her up instead. Lay down your jealousy for esteem, your criticism and compliments, and your meanness for kindness. Imagine what that would do for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, it goes on, by engaging in the mean girl phenomenon, we are actually hindering ourselves from walking in the fullness of our salvation. What if we pull the curtain on the whole mean girl sham? What if we allowed ourselves to be vulnerable with one another and embraced each other with understanding? What if we choose to use kind words rather than harsh ones? This is the maturity that God seeks from us. And so when I read this, I thought, wow, it ties into both slandering and gossiping because they're both very mean behaviors. Um, I'm going to now go and read uh, day 10 of the slant of the gossiping tongue. As um, Deborah Piguet writes, the gossiping tongue, and we start out with Proverbs 18.8, the words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's inmost parts. And I like the way that the message says it. It says, listening to gossip is like eating cheap candy. Do you really want junk like that in your belly? It seems that every woman at the beauty shop had an opinion about why Oprah Winfrey had not married her longtime beau, Stedman Graham. Refusing to join the discussion, I buried my head in my book and decided it was a good time to catch up on my reading. Because I have been the subject of a few newsy conversations, I have an aversion to such non-productive exchanges. I sat there thinking, what's it to you? Why do you care? And I find myself doing this even when I'm, one of the shows that I watch, listen to a lot is The View on their podcast. And they have that section that is called, um, oh, it's like, it, to me, it's like gossip. The, you know, the hot stories, I can't remember the name of it. But they're always, they have an article maybe of um, some comment that was made by someone or something that someone did recently. It was an actor who said that he and his wife, they don't have their children take a bath every night. They don't see the, the necessity to take a bath every night. And so the big discussion was, how do you feel about that? And everybody was given their opinion. And I said out loud to the, I was listening to it on my phone. I said out loud to my phone, well, what is it to you? Why does it matter? You know, who cares? You know, and a lot of times when I listen to those kinds of shows, that is my response because I feel that a lot of that is nobody's business and it is gossiping. Do you sometimes engage in idle and often malicious talk about the personal affairs of another? Gossip can be such a delectable choice morsel that may find it impossible to resist. Now I'm certain everyone reading this book has been guilty of partaking of this particular pastime either as a hearer or a, a bearer or a hearer at one time or another, oh, the downside of such behavior. Did you know that gossiping can lower your sense of self-worth? How? When you gossip, you tend to realize you're not walking in integrity. We feel best about ourselves when we do things that are pleasing to God. After all, he created us for his pleasure. So what's the solution and how do you stop gossiping? Catch yourself before you indulge and ask yourself why you are being a bearer of such news. Is this the only way you know how to establish camarad camaraderie with others? Do you need to be the center of attention? Does it feel, does it make you feel superior to know something negative about somebody that the hearer doesn't know? 
Are you envious of your subject's accomplishments? Why are you willing to use the temple of God as a trash receptacle by being a receiver of gossip? So it's not just the person who tells the, the gossip, but the person who listens to it. You know, you may not even say anything, but you're just, uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. That is, you are just as guilty as the person who is bringing the gossip to you. What do you plan to do with the information a gossip shares with you? That's another thing too. Sometimes a gossip will come to you and they say, I'm going to tell you this, but you can't tell anybody. But deep in your heart, you really want to share that with somebody else. You know, so um, are you bored with your life and need more meaningful activities? It has been my observation that those who are ardently pursuing their own goals and aspirations are less likely to waste time discussing the affairs of others. If you are serious about eliminating gossip from your life, you must start an all out campaign against it. Let everyone know you will not be a bearer or a hearer of choice morsels about anyone. Declare your environment, whether at work, at home, or at play, to be a gossip-free zone. Make every effort to avoid gossip mongers. So, Proverbs 2019 warns, a gossip tells secret, so don't hang around with someone who talks too much. It reminds me of that song, you talk too much, you worry me to death. You know, that was you talk, talk, talk too much. When people come into my office and start to gossip or to engage in any other ungodly talk, I point to my tongue and explain tongue fast. They immediately know I have no plans to indulge their conversation. Refusing to engage in gossip may result in fewer visitors and phone calls. However, your impact will be far reaching. I have received emails, calls, and letters from people across the United States testifying about the impact that the tongue fast is having on their lives. When your tongue is used as an instrument of righteousness, your stock will rise in heaven. What a beautiful thing. You will be able to humbly declare with complete dependence on the Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And today's affirmation is, I am not a busybody in other, other people's matters. Therefore, I do not yield my tongue as an instrument of gossip. And I searched the, uh, for scriptures that pointed out real gossipers in the Bible. And I found the story of Miriam and Aaron in the Old Testament. And they were, you know, uh, uh, gossiping about Moses. And it could be out of jealousy because Moses had that, you know, connection with God that nobody else had. And even though they were, um, you know, his helpmates, but he's the one that God reached out to. And uh, so the, one of the things they did was they talked about his wife, his, you know, because his wife was a Cushite woman. So they found something to gossip about Moses. God did not like that. And as a result of their gossiping, God um, struck Miriam with leprosy. And the same Moses turned around and asked the Lord to remove that from her. So gossiping can be, you know, bring disaster. It's dangerous. It is dis divisive and so many other things. But uh, I found so much information about gossiping in the Bible. And it says that the Hebrew translation in the Old Testament for gossip is defined as one who reveals secrets or one who goes about as a tale bearer or scandal monger. 
It's a way of talking about someone behind his or her back that creates a negative image of the one being talked about. One of the things I, I'm gonna offer is that after we're done with our discussions, um, most of the questions in the workbook are to me are very personal, but I looked at numbers one and number seven. So if we have time and anyone we want to discuss that, you know, feel free to open up on those. But listening to gossip is the same as spreading gossip and God sees gossiping as a sin. Some negative tones are derived from engaging in gossiping and it is clearly stated in scripture. I found some um, things about gossiping that we need to avoid so that we don't fall into the prey of being gossips. It says that gossiping is divisive. It divides relationships and the pain associated with gossip is felt long after the words are spoken. And you can find that in Proverbs 16, 28, and also in Titus 3, 10. So you can read that on your, um, time, you know, on your own time, but I found that in Proverbs 16, 28, and Titus 3, 10, it talks about how divisive gossip can be. Gossip is also poisonous. Let's take a look at James 3, 7, and 8. Gossip is foolish. And uh, we have four scriptures, Matthew 12, 36, Titus 3, 1 through, and 2, Proverbs 1, 7, and Proverbs 10, 18 through 21. Number four, gossip is not God's plan for you. When we speak of others, if our words aren't motiva motivated by love, we are being disobedient. Galatians 5.13 and 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Also Romans 12.2. Remember, we were created in his image. So if we won't speak it in heaven, we surely don't want to speak it on this side either. And gossip is sin. And I love the uh, Message Bible for um, in Proverbs, the explanation of gossiping. For some reason, it just brings it home to me to read it from the Message Bible. It's, more, it's almost like a chastisement. And I found that in Proverbs 2019, which we did cover in the lesson today, the, the Message Bible says, gossip can't keep secrets so never confide in blabbermouths. And then Proverbs 4.13, it says, a gad about gossip can't be trusted with a secret, but someone of integrity won't violate a confidence. Ephesians 4.29 says, watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps each other word is a gift. Beware then of gossiping in the form of a prayer request for someone else. All we're doing is in, in many cases is sharing information about another church member, coworker, or friend who did not give us permission to share. You all should always ask, always ask to get the person's consent to share with your prayer group. Um, I remembered earlier in the COVID crisis, we, I heard our pastor lovingly say to the congregation, please do not post anything on Facebook about an illness or a death of another church member. Because by doing that, you're given information that Maybe other family members that are out of town or what have you have not even heard about. And um, so she said, I know you're anxious to, to let people know, but leave it up to the family to make the announcement before you go on there asking for prayers for these people when nobody gave you permission to do that. And I remembered um, a friend of ours 
whose cousin, um, somebody mentioned her cousin on Facebook, and she told me, you know, I said, pray for him that he's very ill and he needs prayers. And she says the family was really outdone by that because it was they knew that he was sick, but it wasn't to that extent. And it was not anybody else's business to publish that on Facebook of all things. And they were getting all kinds of calls, you know, because by the time it goes from one mouth to the next or one ear to the next, that person is dying because that's the way our gossip spreads. So remember, gossiping is sin. God is not happy with gossipers. It is frivolous, divisive, and dishonorable talk. We can gossip about the good news of Christ. We can gossip about all of the blessings we receive from him. He loves that. But once we start gossiping about people and, and um, the things that we hear about them, all we're doing is destroying lives. I personally feel that this was a very good lesson. And in spite of the fact that I was so tired and Larry asked me, he said, mom, are you going to be able to do it? I said, yes, I'm going to do it because like every other lesson in this book, when you're reading it, you are talking to yourself. And it is reminding me that even if I listen, I am encouraging gossiping. And with that, I will open up for any comments you may have. So you can unmute your lines. And um, did anyone have any other input that they'd like to make? Well, before we open it up, I just wanna say standing ovation clap it up that was one well of a lesson right there that was <laughs> that was an awesome lesson um so much information shared um very detailed and i i didn't doubt it but i I'm, i am very impressed of, of your teaching skills and i appreciate <laughs> work that you put in because I know you were tired and you really muscled through it and it's clear and evident that you let God use you so standing ovation on your lesson today thank you <laughs> thank you so much I have one one thing to admit my son shared some wonderful notes with me this morning and I had made a note to myself to include part of that um, on my first um the beginning of my presentation, but I just went right past it, forgot all about it. But Larry had some really, really good notes about, one thing I liked is how he started it by, um, he started it by saying, ain't no telling what Jack told Helen. And then he talks about the gossip in town, how dangerous it is. And the fact that, in the, in the story we talked about, she talks about women in the beauty shop, but this kind of gossip also goes on in barbershops. You know, it's not just the women that gossip, the men do too. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And I saw to Tommy raise up his head all of a sudden. Tommy. <laughs> you heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> today, uh, today I was looking up uh, this Reverend Reginald Sharp, and I was looking at what he had to say about gossiping, and he said his grandmother always told him that gossiping and the gospel go together. So in other words, his grandmother always told him to spread the gospel and not the gossip. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I, I found that very interesting, you know, because I would never have thought of that. Yeah. Uncle Mort, Uncle Mort, um, one of our evangelists who comes to see us, 
uh, Manuel Scott, he's taught us that uh, his dad taught him to gossip the gospel. Mm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. gossip, Trump gossip the gospel. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's it's plenty in there <laughs> that we can talk about for sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of parents, my my mom and dad taught us whenever uh, somebody brings you something, they carry something away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people will try and 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 start up a gossip conversation with you just to see what you're going to say. Yeah, and, and take it. So the, the the moral was a bone that a dog that brings a bone. Carries, carries a book. Everybody's probably heard that, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's ironic that today I was reading, and I came up on something that talked about uh, rumors and gossip. Can I read it? It's not long. Yes, please. Okay, it's a story. Once upon a time, an old man spread rumors that his neighbor was a thief. As a result, the young man was arrested. Days later, he was proven innocent. After being released, he sued the old man for wrongly accusing him. Now in court, the old man told the judge, they were, they were just comments. They didn't, he didn't mean to harm anyone. So the judge, before passing his sentence, told the old man, I want you to write all the things you said about him on a piece of paper, cut it up into little pieces and on your way home, throw the pieces of paper out of your car window. Tomorrow, come back here, come back to here, the, 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 the results. The judge before passing the sentence, okay, I'm sorry, I got that twice. The next day, the judge told the old man before receiving the sentence, I want you to go out and gather up all the pieces of paper that you threw out of your car window yesterday. (laughs) The old man looked at him and said, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. The wind spread them all over the place and we won't know where to find them. So the judge replied, the same way. Simple words and comments may destroy the honor of a person to such an extent that a person will not be able to fix it. Mm. If you can't speak well of someone, don't say anything at all. Let let all be be masters of our mouth so that we won't be slaves of our words. Ooh. Oh, that's good. That reminds me of what I, I was going to comment on in a few minutes. But you guys remember when we were kids and we used to play the telephone game? So we would start, <laughs> say something right at begin in the beginning of the line and then pass it on. By the time it gets to the end of the line, mm-hmm. this is the same thing that was said. And I mean, it could be a very simple statement like mm-hmm. eight strawberry pancakes and bacon. By the time he gets around to the end, it'll be blueberry or something else. It won't be. <laughs> right? mm-hmm. That's the game. Mm-hmm. That's that I learned about gossip when I was young um, by playing that game. And that when you mentioned that story, that's what it reminded me of. You can't bring all the things back together because by the time you get back to it, it's all changed around, messed up, and mm-hmm. you know, broken apart. So I love that story. That was a great one, Sister Joyce. <laughs> Yes, it was, Sister Jordan. I I really like um, your delivery because you could tell that you really have studied because it's you have a quiet delivery, but with such authority, mm-hmm. until only one who has studied can deliver with that mm-hmm. kind of authority, with Amen. that kind of quietness. You're just a quiet and meek individual, anyway. Love you. <laughs> Thank you. But, um, Yes, that's excellent. And when you talked about the um, the gossip today, it just rings rampant. Uh, I even hear people bragging that they have the gift of gab. 
<laughs> and the talk shows, as you mentioned, they're just full of gossip yes. these days. And then you have Facebook and all the other social media. media and I am not a part of any social media and will not be a part of it. It just runs rampant with gossip. And it seems like they, they're the jury. They, they convict on gossip. And they even have a name for it. They call it council culture. <laughs> the whole culture of gossip. Um, but you brought out all of the points. And, and uh, I thought of this when I read this. I thought of the song, the Staples Singers sing a song years ago about a neighbor who was gossiping about another neighbor down the streets talking about she drank and she was loud and that she knew don't speak to her and her kid and then that same neighbor in in a second had pulled her child that child out of the path of a car and got hit by the car and then she was like who was that brave person who did this and the neighbor she had been talking to said it was the bad girl who lived down the street. Uh -huh. And 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 I just want to 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 say what the chorus of that song says. It says, a tongue can accuse and carry bad news. Gossip is cheap and it's low. So unless you've made no mistakes in your life, just be careful of the stones that you throw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah. I uh I I was saying the like you said, everybody gossips. But uh when when I was reading this and then uh and then I, I remember this in Second Corinthians uh, when Paul was about to visit the church of Corinthians. He was reluctant to go uh, because he feared that there may be discard, uh, there may be jealousy, uh, fits of rage, selfish, ambition, slack, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. And if you know a gossiper, you are reluctant to get, be around them. And uh, it said that in my lifetime, I've I've known a very a very vicious gossip person, and too many people think it's okay to share information that shouldn't be shared because they believe it to be true. Mm -hmm. So justify sharing people's personal and private information it is no one's business to share. In their mind, it's fine to destroy relationships and reputations. They justify it by saying, if it's true, they deserve it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a difference in a person who made a mistake. The Bible teaches us that intentions of the heart of one who gossip is evil. If that is in your heart, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. you are a gossiping and slandering, and you are gossiping and slandering at the same time. And we mm -hmm. do is pray for those type of people. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, um... sorry, Sister Tina. Before you get started. Can we ask, because I can't, I'm, I don't know if everybody else is getting the same feedback, but I'm getting a lot of feedback from, um, you know, the, the outside, the person who's speaking. So until, until we start to speak, can we mute our phone? That way it'll be clear for everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Larry. Uh, thank you, Mama Jordan. Uh, I loved how you constantly backed it up with scriptures. You, you came at us from generates from New Old Testaments and New Testaments. Thank you so much. It shows you did a lot of work, even though you party real hard over the weekend. <laughs> uh, 
Um, mine is when you mentioned Mama Jordan, how they want to put out the gossip first or the information first. We had two incidents in our family where people wanted to put the information out first and it caused fear. One of them was um, they had the wrong person that had the illness and had people praying and calling up the other person saying they had coronavirus. And they had made the mistake. One, uh, one was an older person in her 70s, and they were saying she was the one with the coronavirus, but the one with the coronavirus was in her 40s. And she was getting phone calls because of the gospel that they wanted to put the information out first. Um, the other time, same families um, said that one person was sick and was almost dying. They were in the hospital. Well, they had uh, so for the, the they had the Marvins uh, mixed up. And so his sister calls up and asks him, why you didn't tell me I'm in a hospital? And he was at home watching TV. That's because one person put out the wrong information because they wanted to be the first to tell everybody about information. And now he's mad because the sister is fussing at him because she should, he should have told her that he was sick. And he's constantly telling her there's nothing wrong with me. And then another brother called and um, see by putting out information so quick without getting the correct information can bring a lot of harm to people who had nothing to do with it. So gossiping is really bad, especially when you have misinformation. So thank you again, Mama Jordan. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So is there somebody talking? I don't think so. I'd like, to, I'd like to comment and let my big sister know that I'm sitting here smiling very proud. I'm a proud peacock mm -hmm. because you did a wonderful, wonderful job and and I agree with Tina, when you were doing the uh, scriptures that you went through and you were giving us a little subtopic for each of them, I was trying desperately to write them all down. <laughs> and I didn't get them all, but I especially love that piece where you gave clusters of, of scriptures related to a, sp a specific topic or a specific kind of behavior. And I really love that. And then I wanted to go on and, uh, and comment, you, you specifically said, that we sh the other you identified the questions in the book that you thought were very personal mm -hmm. but i'm asking your permission to to do a part of one that's not okay. that i didn't do in a personal way mm -hmm. because one of the things i did notice in, in reading the uh pages was that because the author's intention is to help all of us to improve our personal behavior whether it's gossiping or whatever yeah. that all of the remedies for fixing the gossiping were kind of directed at the reader, you know? Mm -hmm. And as I was going through it, I kept thinking that um, the thing that wasn't talked about a lot, but, but we probably would be good to, to talk about it, is how much the gossiping hurts the person who is being gossiped about. And I think Tommy did mention some of that when he, when he spoke. Mm -hmm. But this is a section just says that um, the writer says that she doesn't think that it's always malicious, malicious behavior that causes somebody to gossip, and that sometimes they genuinely care about other people. Sometimes they say they genuinely care about other people. And she said, um, so they discuss uh, with others what and want to know more about the persons that they claim to, to care about. So then she asked some questions. Why did you desire the information you received about someone else during the course of gossiping? Uh, did you have an interest in the person's life? 
do you have, I'm having a hard time seeing, so help me here. Do you have, or do you desire a special relationship with that person? And if so, why didn't you get your input firsthand by going directly to that person? And I thought that that was a good thing to bring up that when you call yourself gossiping other person, sometimes people gossip in prayer. They're praying about someone, something about another person that they wish would happen for the person. They're really telling the person's business. Exactly. This is in the prayer, you know. So if you're that interested in helping that person, you should really just go to them first, you know, and find out or talk to them. And so she said, what, uh, what is the reason that, that people would do that? And so I thought about how people become impatient. They just got to know. They got like the people you're talking about on the, on the view. They just have to know, even mm -hmm. though it's none of their business. They just have to know it. So they continue to, um, to become impatient and they, they will somehow get it out there, mm -hmm. you know, because they need to know it, not because the other persons need to know it. And then um, they're not trusting that God is going to lead them. If, you, if you're, like, if I want to know something about anybody on this prayer line, I mean, in, in, the, in this Bible study, and it's biting away at me, I really should go to prayer. The Lord tells us that we should be anxious for nothing. Right. But in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, we should bring our requests to him. Mm -hmm. So you go to him and pray about it and ask him to guide you through that anxiety that you're feeling about wanting to talk to that person, because you really don't have to do it. It's another strategy. She gave a lot of strategies about how we can block ourselves from being either a hearer or a, or a listener of gossip, you know, a bearer. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for reminding me of that word, Joyce. And um, so there's a way to handle it. And you don't have to know. People just, you know, pray about that. If you just have to know somebody's business, there's a problem there that you are you're not recognizing. You know, yeah. so pray about it before you 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 go on and do that. And remember that God tells you that you don't have to be anxious about it. You know, so I wanted to bring that up because she didn't talk a lot about the person and how it may hurt that person. Yes, for whom you of whom you're gossiping. Or, you know, making announcements um, about a person mm -hmm. without ahead of that person saying anything, you know, like you can mm -hmm. be upsetting. And mm -hmm. they know something about you, and it may not be a bad thing, but it's not for them to announce it. Yeah. You know? <sighs> I remembered when I, I, I guess it's when I turned 70. Choir rehearsal, it was a Saturday morning and that was my birthday. And some, one of the, um, one of the people that was working on the, the music, you know, called our choir director away. They had a problem with something and they needed her input. So she just told us to take a break. So we're just sitting there talking and one, one of, a friend of mine just jumped up and announced, today is Joyce Jordan's birthday. She's 70. And everybody's, well, phew, I didn't know you were that old. And they're going on and on. And on. <laughs> like, who asked her to announce that? You know, I mean, I wasn't, I'm not ashamed. I wasn't ashamed of turning 70. I was excited. But it was for me to tell, you mm. know. So that's another form. It's maybe not gossiping. I don't know if it's gossiping, but you're announcing something about someone just like on a prayer request. You know, I may tell someone about something that's going on with me. A lot of people don't want to share their illnesses mm -hmm. with everybody, you know, and so you may want to just share it with a close friend and that friend may feel, you know, we're close enough that I can ask my prayer partners to pray for my friend. But if you're gonna do that, then don't use any names, you know? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I noticed with you, Marva, is that because you're talking to a lot of people at church who are having, you know, different illnesses and 
uh, you know, family members in the hospital and stuff like that. And you belong to a prayer group that you've been with for many, many years. You will ask that person, can I share it? Mm -hmm. with the prayer group. If they, if they say, okay, you can, then you go ahead and share it, you know? And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's what we should practice. Yeah. You know, not wanting to be the first person to bring the news to the, to the prayer group necessarily. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, if I can jump in right here, um, I wanted to talk about the, the affirmation at the end of the chapter. And it says, I'm not a busybody in other people's matters. Therefore, I don't yield my tongue to, as an instrument of gossip. So the part of it that I want to say is like busybody. Being a busybody is somebody who is like quick to just speak and even though they might not even have all the right information they still want to put it out there anyway and you guys were talking about putting that information out first that is a, a sign of a busybody and I see it in small groups and I see it in families I see it in at work and you know it's always at least one busybody that wants to get first off get everybody's information and then mm -hmm. be the other person who want to distribute all the information. And you guys probably have somebody in mind who I just described, you know, and without me saying their name, I just described exactly what they, they, they do. So um, I've never, I've always had a, this has been my pet peeve for somebody to be a busybody. And as a kid, I mostly saw <laughs> ladies being busybodies, but as I became an adult, I saw that there are a lot of men busybodies as well. I mean, they just cannot hold water and they are just like quick to, you know, talk about things that they may not even know anything about. And that happens a lot at the barbershop. And uh, mom, you kind of mentioned it. The barbershop, ladies, I know you guys have some, some good conversations, but I'll I tell you, the barbershop can have some doozies and you can hear almost anything at the barbershop guys talk about anything from the kids to work to you know just every i mean they talk about anything right and it, there have been times when i've been sitting in the chair people have been involved in a conversation for like 15 minutes about a particular topic somebody walk in fresh from out the street and Right mid-sentence, somebody else is talking. They just jump right on in. Like, they don't be a part of the conversation the whole time. It's like, hold on, time. you just walked in. And you just walk in on the conversation and add your two cents. That, to me, is one of the, like, one of the things that makes me not want to be sharing my information with people because, it, like, in a, in a group setting like that, because when people come in, they don't might not know me from a can of paint but then they're going to have an opinion about what I should do and what I had to say but you don't even know me from a can of paint and you're going to tell me what I should be doing so I'm reluctant to share uh in that type of setting but there are others who just come in and they just gossip their own business it's like they want to put it out there so that they can get a reaction out of other people and that's not just a barbershop but that's in you know, other settings that I see it happen. And it's like um, people want to get a reaction off of, you know, what other people might think about what they say. And that's mm -hmm. another peeve of mine, you know. So me personally, gossiping is not my thing. I'm, people, if they tell you that I'm gossiping about something, they probably like on me because I, I, I'm just, I, that's not my get down. You know, that's not my, my forte. And I don't even usually have people coming to me with gossip because they know I'm not with that, you know? So at work, people don't, I hear about gossiping. I'm the last person to find out because people don't come to me and tell me what's going on. And I'm okay with that um, because that's just, that's one of my pet peeves. I, I, gossiping, you know, I, 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 I try not to be judgmental about people, but yeah, you know, that's something that, that I try to avoid I try to avoid people who are gossipers. Yeah. So that's my little spiel. Guys gossip just as much as girls. <laughs> and sometimes we can be as um, 
we could be more hurtful because guys, they tend to, they know what they stand that is going to hurt somebody else. And they say it be, on part still, they say it to be hurtful. We call, we used to call it playing the dozens, you know, and we would talk about somebody, um, family shortcomings because somebody's father might have got fired from their job or you know, somebody's parents may have split up. Kids would start saying, yeah, your mommy and your daddy, you know, just can be very cruel. And it starts at a young age and guys do it probably more than girls. And you guys probably don't realize it, but I, I, I know it because I hear it all the time. So that's my little spiel. Thank you guys for sh uh, letting me share. Well, I like to say that, um, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, that was an awesome lesson and the, the depth that you went into your research mm -hmm. was just outstanding. And we can appreciate that you just didn't pick up the book and start just looking for something to say, but you actually gave us some in-depth and for you to uh, relate it to um, that book, uh, Mean Girls, I, I got some notes when you were talking. And uh, when we, when I was in the classroom and we would use books like that for that purpose of curbing some of that, especially juvenile court kids, Lord have mercy. Everybody knew everybody's crime. And I mean, I wouldn't even let them go there in the classroom because some of them hadn't been to court and their case hadn't been, re, you know, even talked about with the judge, but some of the stuff you can hear adults talking more than the kids and just don't lend your ear. Don't lend your ear. And wow. we have to be safe that way. And not only that, we when we say we love God, but we do things that are the opposite of what God loves, huh, we find ourselves, people not gonna believe us. And again, tonight that was very powerful. And I'm going to go back and read these notes when I get off <laughs> and, and, and butter up my, you know, how you sharpen your own knife and just make sure what we are saying, it's uh, we can back it up with the scripture like you like you did. I appreciate that. Thank you. If I could just jump in here for a minute, Mama Jordan, thank you for a beautiful lesson tonight. Uh, you really did. Well. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was a wonderful lesson, and I'm just reminded of sometimes when gossip starts, by the time it gets back to the person that someone is gossiping about, or everybody's gossiping about, they don't know who started it. And then, you know, the wrong person might get accused of starting it because they heard it from somebody else, and they heard it from somebody else. So the best thing to do is when someone starts gossiping, Start talking about Jesus. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do. I was at a, at a party here Friday night. And someone was just gossiping. And I just started talking about Jesus. They got up and left the table. Mm. Said, hey, I know how to do that from now on. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> gossipers are very hurtful. And they don't know what they're doing. Matter of fact, they don't even care. As long as they're getting their message out of what they think about something. Um, as Mr. Larry said, Dr. Manuel Scott Sr. tells us to gossip the gossip, the gospel. Mm -hmm. You do that. You know if you're really gossiping the gospel. Because if you're not, people will get up and leave you. Because they don't want to hear what Jesus has to say. So if they got something to say in it and it's not about Jesus, leave. Don't, in, don't entertain it. Because it's certainly going to get you into trouble. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great evening. Amen. Hello. Uh-uh, I haven't heard from me. Okay, does anyone else have something to offer? I would like to add one other something. 
in, in, in respect to that one question in the book, describe the steps you take or are willing to take. I, I've never been a big gossiper. Mm -hmm. I've worked on jobs where I had to be a confidant for years. I worked for attorneys. Mm -hmm. And I found that people would, would try me. They would, they would just approach me and act as if they were starting a friendly conversation, but they'd actually be trying to find out what this attorney was doing or what that attorney was doing. I worked for one criminal lawyer and, and everything about a criminal attorney screams confidential. Mm -hmm. Well, any attorney. So there was this one person that just, I mean, before the day was over, I knew they were gonna come to my desk and I was way around on a backside with my criminal attorney because sometimes he would like to bring people in through the back door if they were, you know, people of notoriety. And mm -hmm. this person would come back and say, what's on Irv's agenda for today? You know, as if to throw me off. <laughs> like I was really gonna start telling them what was on this attorney's agenda for today. So I learned early on, because I was young when I, when I started working with that law firm, I learned early on that gossip, that's a form of gossip, because they were going to take that information and go and use it for whatever. I don't know. I worked for a senior partner. I don't know if they were trying to get me fired. I just didn't have any idea, but I knew that I wasn't getting ready to gossip with them. Whereas there were some who were, were so willing to talk about the case with other people, with their boss's case. And I often wondered how, how if, if, you know, if they knew, if that attorney knew that their person was talking about their case like that. But I never said a word. And as I went through life, I sort of gauged when somebody was actually coming with something that they really wanted information for, or if they just wanted to find out something or bring a bone and carry a bone. So what I learned to do is just be busy. I, I was always busy and I was busy, but and in this book, um, uh, Deborah Piguet said, uh, was it Reginald Sharp said that when you really got things to do, when you're busy with your own agenda, you really don't have time to mess around with nobody else in their business. And that's basically the way I've tried to be all my life all my adult life. Now I'm go going back to the, the teenage years. Yeah, we, we all gossip, <laughs> little girls gossip. But when we got to become mature and, and learn about the things of God, you know that gossip is just not good. Yes. And gossip will take down your character. If you indulge in it, According to Deborah Piguet and according to the Bible, if you take it in and then bear it and take it out, you have caused someone else's uh, injury. And that's the sin. What comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And when you let something come from your heart like that, that means your heart is, is sort of messed up. So mindful of the, what's coming from the mouth because it's coming from the heart and also mindful of the people that are coming to you but I, I i really do feel that i learned to see somebody coming to bring something that was not of god you could almost see it you have god gave people the the, the spirit of discernment i believe that 
I was one. Even my kids, they knew they couldn't do it with me. They could not tell me a lie and I not detect it. So I just want to say thank you for the lesson, Joyce. That was beautiful. You brought out some things that really made me think. And uh, also Deborah Piguet said that when, when you are a leader, you really can't afford to be a gossiper or to, to slander or anything else because you get everybody else infected. So it's just bad all the way around, gossiping. Gossiping is a no-no. That's all. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Okay. Um, I have to say that my sister did a fantastic job. And yeah. I have a friend that if she always called me and tell me things. And yeah, when, no, when I say, no, then she said, she, she would say to me, um, you didn't know? I don't know, I didn't know, I, didn't, I don't care. And she said, but you never know. I said, well, I don't care. I don't, that's the people business, you know? She always said, you never know. I said, I don't care. It's not my business, you know? And that's my friend and I love her dearly. But she always come with something that, you didn't know that this one did. You didn't know that this, no, I didn't know. I don't care. So I don't know, she always said that. I'm in a lala word. Leave me in my lala word. I don't know. <laughs> no, okay. You know, uh, Veronica just, just told you, you just reminded me of something. Seriously, I used to years ago for for many many years. I um, picked up and and carried someone. This was year back in my in my old church, and she's gone on to be with the Lord. But I would pick her up and take her back and forth to church and to activities and so on. And we'll be in the same choir in the same choir rehearsal. And yeah. the minute we got in my car for me to drop her off at her home, she'll have something juicy that she wants to tell me. I'll say the same thing to her. I said, I didn't hear that. I said, no, I don't care. You know? And she said, oh, you're so naive. You're just so, you're out of it. You're just so naive. I yeah. said, then I like being naive. Yes. Because I don't care about those people. Exactly. Business. And what I would say to her is, I try to look at people and see the good in them. Mm -hmm. And if you're busy looking at the good in them, you don't have time to mm -hmm. look at the flaws. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm naive, but those flaws, I don't allow them to rise above the mm -hmm. good in the people. You mm -hmm. know, that's just, that's just been my, my, my mantra. Mm -hmm. And I'm not perfect. I'm sure that exactly. along the road, mm -hmm. I engage in some kind of gossip somewhere. Mm -hmm. But she would get so bent out of shape. She just could not understand how I was in the same room with her in the same choir rehearsal, mm -hmm. and I missed the gossip. <laughs> Listen, this one is so terrible that she left the company where we were working like years ago, and I was still working. And she would call me and tell me that this happened. I don't know. I didn't know. What are you working? I don't know. Because I'm never... <laughs> Yes. You're not looking then, for that. No. And then, and then I have another group of people that when they keep start talking, and let's say if I come in, she said, oh, there comes um, jabon, soap. Because I always tell them that when they're talking certain things, and I, it's not my business, everything are usually talking about me. I would say, I'm like this. I'm like soap. Everything just slide, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But I tell them it's now I, I don't just care. Slide. Everything just, mm -hmm. just drop, you know? Mm -hmm. Just slide. But yeah. But Joyce did a fantastic she job, did. I love. Yes, she did. She did a great job. I taught you well. Yes. You taught me well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's not gossipy. <laughs> hey, gossip. That's true. Thank, thank you, Larry. That's Elton. Oh, Elton. That's the truth, baby. You know, I had uh, one thing that helped me out about gospel. I was, you know, it's two sides to every story. So, you know, they when they come to me, I always ask, did you verify with the other person? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, mm. and, and another one I always did, 
they come with that gossip, and then I say, well, okay, I'm gonna let me check, let me check with the president, see what really happened. And then they said, no, nah, no, nah, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> and so that, <laughs> that put a heart to all that, that, that you know, that gossip, because gossip can't be addictive. I mean, you know, so people yes, with with news and stuff like that, they I want to know the inside scoop. So I know a lot of people that uh, can't wait to get their phone call. But they know who to call. So <laughs> they, gospel, they know who to call. <laughs> so Are you they, right? Oh, somebody listen. You're right about that because it's always two stories. You know, right. so whatever it is, it's I'm always sorry. two right. sides to the story. I'm sorry. Right. Yes. I'm talking, it's actually three. three. What the truth is, what they're saying, and what <laughs> it's usually three sides. I'm gonna say what they're saying, what actually happened, and the truth. It's the truth. Yeah, it's your truth. Larry, Larry, is is their your side, their side, and the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hey, hey! You guys remember the remember back in the day when the coward the gossiper would always say, "Now you didn't hear that from me." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and you can you can tell a gossiper right away because if you come with someone and that you want to pray that something happened, the gossiper always said, what happened? Yeah, how did they die? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, yeah. you said so-and-so passed away and we need to pray for them. Uh, what did he die from? Uh, he had, yeah. <laughs> I know he should have laid off that bacon. He was eating that pork. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. They forget uh -huh. all about praying for the person. They mm -hmm. just want to know Ellen said. They want to know the inside gossip. Yes. And yes. as soon as they get the phone, yeah. they don't call and say, we have to pray for Mr. Jones. They said, oh, he had that high blood pressure. He was <laughs> eating that pork. I, I even saw him smoking cigarettes, girl. Ooh. <laughs> and they said, what happened? Oh, he passed away. <laughs> um, that is so true. That, um, a lot of times, even like you know, you're you're in a, a setting, and they have people are asking for prayer requests. There's some people that want to know exactly why you're praying for that person. Yes. Yeah. Some of them have the, the mm -hmm. and say, "Well, what happened?" They don't need to know what happened. No. Mm -hmm. All they need to know is that that person needs prayer. Exactly. That's all. Mm -hmm. exactly. Whatever the details should be nobody's business. That's right. right. And that happens in my Sunday school class. We have someone that has information on everybody. And one of the person would, you know, say like, come up and say, I want to um, have a prayer request for so-and-so. And then this person would start trying to give details and he'd cut, try to cut him off by saying, they just need prayers. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. you don't need to know what it is. They just need prayers. Yeah. yeah. You know. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yeah. Can, I, can I add one last thing that I had in um, my notes right here is that there is organized gossip. And <laughs> People practice gossiping, and it's called CNN, Tribune, and Fox. Mm. That's, yeah. that, that's organized gossiping, and yeah. it's a practice. I even watch um, like sports shows. They uh, they're kind of gossiping about what teams' mm -hmm. uh, shortcomings are and what uh, how teams are having problems within the locker room and all. That's gossiping. That's yeah. gossiping. There's organized gossiping. And people practice gossiping that we accept. But I stopped watching the news many years ago, and I don't want, want to get in nobody's business right now. But I highly recommend that you monitor the news that you watch and the amount of the amount of news that you watch and the source of news that you watch, mm. because that is the way that fear is planted inside the community, the, the society. They plant fear. The, um, uh, false information, just like the information about getting the vaccine. There's so much false information out there and it's coming from people who really don't know what they're talking about. 
So mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying, keep your guard up if you are a news watcher or news reader or whatever, because the news is organized gossiping. That's that's how mm -hmm. I describe it. It's organized. Yeah, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, Larry, that that scripture preponder, the last one, it says, when a leader listens to malicious gossip, hmm. all the workers get infected with evil. Uh, what we, did we have in the last four years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The entire country. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Got it from the top. Right yes. from the top. But I agree with you wholeheartedly, Larry, wholeheartedly. Uh, I, I listen to very little news. When there's a, when there's a national uh, uh, emergency or something, I'll watch it. But yeah. when I'm watching TV, it's 99% of the time, I'm watching, I'm watching ESPN. I'm watching a game. But you're so right. Uh, but that organized gossip it's for a reason. It's directed for a reason, and it has a purpose. And you can see a headline, and you can determine whether it's from Fox News or CNN just by the headline. I don't have to look at it, and when I hear it, I go, oh, that's probably Fox. Oh, that's probably CNN. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they both have an agenda. Exactly. I have another yeah. analogy. I was sitting here and I picked up my hand sanitizer and I thought about when they were trying to crucify Christ, what did he say? I washed my hands of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found no fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! I washed my hands. You're yes. not going to put that on me. You're not going to say I one gave you okay to crucify Christ <laughs> and he washed his hands and yes. with this san hand sanitizer sitting there and and the lord it, you you know when the holy spirit is moving mm -hmm. give you an analogy mm -hmm. i i wash my hands of that uh ooh, i find no fault in christ mm -hmm. lord have mercy wow. and, and that's Amen. how our lives yeah. ought to be come with clean hands and a clean heart exactly mm -hmm. and it's it's me it's me oh lord <laughs> standing in the need of prayer prayer but this was such an awesome lesson I, I keep saying it but when i saw the hand sanitizer oh come on holy spirit mm -hmm. keep moving keep moving a clean heart give me a clean heart and some clean hands mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. scripture said that a, a person with uh, integrity mm -hmm. violate confidence mm hmm you know, so we we must learn to walk with integrity. Mm. And that you know, sin is not pleasing to God. That's right. And um, and and you know, it, as as mature Christians, I'm sure that a lot of us don't encourage gossiping and don't gossip. But you know, sometimes we just hear things. You know, mm. and the best thing to do is. Not to repeat it, and like like Toti says, she just was like washes it off like soap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that analogy is a good one, you know. Yeah, it, it, um, it really hurts the person that the gossip is being, you know, is directed on. All right. Mm -hmm. And nothing hurts more than when you become the subject of that gossip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Amen. what the scripture says. You hear something that somebody has said about you yes. or to others that you know is absolutely untrue. Right. Yeah. And you know that it's out there and you know that others don't believe that it's not true because by the time the, go the gossip has really marinated in the, <laughs> the, the heart of those folk. Yeah, they're that. holding that. Something like that. Mm. So you have to, you, you really have to maintain that attitude of, so what? Somebody said that I have a shot. You know, go to the Lord. You, you, you can't let it worry you. But there are people, and, and the other thing that bothers me is that there are people who have taken their lives, children, teenagers, in because. school, yes. right. because somebody started a vicious 
I about a, a vicious piece of gossip, and it, it's it's going mm. on and on and on, and it's grown into so many, had gotten so many legs and arms and mm. whatever. Those young people take their lives, young and old, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they become ashamed to walk. And, and the person who is has started it, who planted the first seed, they're right. the ones that should be walking in shame. Right. You know? mm -hmm. But it, it's it's something else. So that it's like that means that like bullying is gossiping. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it has segments of gossip. I, yep. I, I agree with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elements of gossip. Mm -hmm. they, they call it cyber bullying when, when you do it on social media and mm -hmm. on uh, you know um, social platforms. They call it cyber bullying. Mm -hmm. And yes is probably the most popular form of bullying for young people nowadays. Yeah. Um, they even, you can watch, um, I forget the name of it, but they would show fights, people fighting and, you know, doing all that mm -hmm. stuff. That's, that's, that's the uh, premise behind all of that is the, the cyber mm -hmm. bullying. And yeah. uh, young people participate in that a lot nowadays. The young people do that a lot. That's a, an attention getter. People mm. want attention, sure, yeah. and and what I like that Deborah Piggy also said was about the tongue fast. That's a good one that that yes. we yeah. we could you know because it happens so sporadically. You can't just know when it's going to happen when someone bring it to you. You're prepared, uh, Sister <laughs> Mort. What's your name, Tori? Tori. Oh, you he, you just have that kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> whatever it washes off of you some people it, yeah. it sort of wants to yeah stick. you know like it yeah. said like a morsel that gets deep down into the innermost mm. but mm. if we start doing the tongue fast thinking before we even receive it mm -hmm. yeah. she said she pointed her tongue and, and say tongue fast <laughs> that's yeah. a good way to do that's it, it. Mm -hmm. yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, I can't tell you where. I didn't do the research. I'm sorry. But somewhere in the Bible, it says that Satan is the prince of the air. <laughs> and, and, and the media is through the airwaves. Mm -hmm. And it really does appear that the airwaves mm -hmm. are being run by really evil people right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. The airwaves, the social media, everything that has to do with 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 uh, news getting out, it's meant it's full of deception and everything. And you're right. If we watch too much of it, it really gets into your spirit. It makes you fearful. Mm -hmm. I found myself really being very fearful when the COVID outbreak was happening in 2020 when it first started. And I think the whole country was gripped with fear because, I mean, we were hearing so much, so much information and it was all different and it had to do with death and sickness and the images they were showing us on television. It was too much. Yes. And, and everybody was talking about it. And people were saying things that they didn't know what they were talking about, mm -hmm. but they were talking. Yeah. So you know what I'm I'm sitting here reflecting on you know there's so many little gems but I'm sitting here reflecting on how innocent children um, are so honest and how they they really don't gossip you know little children mm -hmm. that's such mm -hmm. a learned behavior mm -hmm. uh, we were sitting and I I know that it would be all right to share this absolutely it's not a problem so I'm going to share it. We were sitting in the living room. It was my husband, my little seven-year-old grandson, going on 70. And my, yes. <laughs> and my, um, my daughter-in-law, his mom, you know. And he, he had a, something in his hand that he was working with. And he kind of tossed it. And my husband said, don't do that. And so his mother said, Dad, you know, that was kind of harsh. And he said, no, it wasn't. And I stopped and I looked. And, you know, people think that's arguing. But he said, no, it wasn't, Mommy. And she said, 
but I thought it was. And he said, no, it wasn't. You talk like that to me sometimes. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. And then after he said that, um, she said something else. I can't remember, but she said something else. Uh, also, you, you don't think that, do you think that was okay? Yes, but he wasn't trying to be mean. That, that was, he was just telling me that it wasn't right for me to do what I did, you know? And he was so much in defense of his grandfather. Mm. He was so much in, you know, correcting his mom, but he didn't go away to the back. He didn't come to me and say, well, grandma, you know what mommy just did? You know, or, you know, you know, he said it openly. Yes, he did. And we had a healthy, intelligent, you know, discussion about it. And somewhere along the line, kids do that. And somewhere along the line, that gets squashed. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, they fall into being the bearers or the hearers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I would just encourage us with little kids because I used to, I had friends who used to say to me, um, why do you allow your sons? I have two sons. Why do you allow them to question you so much or to ask you so many questions? And I said, because that's the way they learn. Mm -hmm. And I think I have, I'm not on my own, I think the Lord has grown them up into the finest men, mm -hmm. you know, that they could possibly be. And, but I always allowed them to question, to ask me questions. And we mm -hmm. always talked about things, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think mm -hmm. that hiding and dodging and thinking they're too young, or we're not mm -hmm. going to tell them. I think those kinds of things yes, what we're talking about here. Yeah, and right pretty there. soon it branches hey, off you know. into oh. their tongues instead of saying those healthy things and, and having those healthy discussions, their tongues become tainted. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just wanted to add that because it just threw me back to, to my little grandson <laughs> and his grown self. The one who said he did not feel good about coming to the wedding and being some random kid with no job. He needed a job at the wedding because he was part of the family. So they found him a random job. They found him a job. <laughs> hey, man. hey uh, we, uh, Larry, you remember Pastor McKnight saying, uh, it's none of my business what other people say about me. Sure do, sure enough. And that's the truth. <laughs> if you think yeah. about me, it's none of my business. <laughs> yeah. So I, before we get off tonight, I want to set the record straight. I know the rumors that you guys all gossip about me and Uncle Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Since we all one family, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We do gossip about you, Tommy. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. And, and as you guys are Christians, so I know if you had, didn't have anything to say, it must be good. <laughs> uh, somebody used a, a, a quote that I didn't get right, and I just want whoever said it to, to help me. You said something about being masters of your mouth. So you won't be slaves of something. And I, I just didn't get it down. Who who, mm -hmm. who did that? Who used that? I read that somewhere. Uh, that was in my little thing that I read, the story. Okay. The story I read. That was the last two lines. Uh-huh. Would you like to hear that again? Yes, yeah. I would. <laughs> Hold on. Mm-hmm. The very last thing it says. So remember this, when your feet slip, you can always recover your balance. But when your tongue slips, you can never recover your words. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's all be masters of our mouths so that we won't be slaves of our words. Uh -huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, got it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, uh, can we... anybody tell me where that reference is to the Prince of the Air? No, no, we can Google it. Okay, Google will probably. Um, will I'm gonna find it and I'll, I'll get it. I'll find it and I'll and I'll uh, have it prepared for next week. Sounds like Ephesians 
Let me look it up. It's funny because it sounds like a in Ephesians six with the Ephesians. That's yeah. I was thinking it was Ephesians. I just can't. I can't find uh, it. No, that's he's against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's not quite that one. That's not the one, right? Yeah, but it also talks about Satan as being an accuser. The great accuser, actually, the accuser of the brethren, uh, right? Which is the uh, behind the uh, vicious gossipers, mm -hmm. malicious gossipers. They mm -hmm. are highly used as Satan, who is the accuser, and they accuse the brethren. And it's very sad, and we should pray for them because if they don't turn around, if they don't repent, and let the Holy Spirit transform them they are certainly on the path to destruction right i'm, I'm gonna I I just look oh i'm sorry i see ephesians two and two uh, yeah, what does it mean when, satan is the prince of the, the power of the air mm -hmm. ephesians two and two no okay okay and i found it also a, it referenced the same thing but ephesians two one through three Okay, mm -hmm. so the whole that will give you, yeah, yeah, and now you're gonna make me read it because I didn't, didn't, uh, I want to see what it's all about now. Mm -hmm. Read it, yeah, mm -hmm. Ephesians 2 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna write that down because I really don't like to quote and don't know where it is. It says, Thank As you. For you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the uh, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who now is at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following the desires and thoughts like the rest. We were nature, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Sound like the news to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, according to the prince of the power of the air. That yeah. I knew. Mm -hmm. But that's that's his little power, but he doesn't have all power. Mm -mm. Right. But I just thought of social media and all those things when you all were talking about how, you know, bullying and, and everything bad uh, on the news is being run by the prince of the, of the air right now. He got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's for a time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was excellent conversation. Um, excellent information and, and pastor he always says where there's good teaching there's good preaching where there's good preaching there's good teaching my majority of you is preaching you you do excellent excellent good preaching amen. and amen it was, it was scripture based it was uh coming from the right place and um i receive it and i think we all i'm speaking on behalf of everybody we receive it and amen. Um, this is this is a lesson that uh, I won't forget, and I uh, got notes, uh, plenty of notes, and mm -hmm. I really look forward to continuing on with this type of discussion because I grow so much from it. I, I've, I've been mentioning, you know, that um, we, we 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 are still sharpening steel, but I mean, it just gets deeper and deeper every every week, and it, I'm so Im impressed and so fortunate that everybody here is so gifted you know that everybody has a, a gift and everybody is uh, sharing that gift and we're all benefiting from it so thank you mom for sharing your gift with us today we've all been blessed because of it we want to thank uh, bishop green for sharing her song we wanted mm -hmm. to thank all the stories that were shared um, i mean i just I, I can't express enough gratitude for you know everybody's participation in this uh, study and especially tonight's discussion. So Amen. I, I, I was going to uh, end this in prayer, 
But before I do, I want to see if anybody else had any other comments, mainly Mama Jordan, before um, you know, I close out in prayer. Well, I just want to say that um, I am really, really growing <coughs> book. Mm -hmm. you know, every single week so far that we have, um, every tongue that we have covered so far, it's just mm -hmm. full of so much um, instruction, information, advice. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is that it's taking us through the, you know, like it's a walk through the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of the admonitions about it is right mm -hmm. there for us, you know. So when uh, Deborah Piguet wrote this book, she was saying, thus says the Lord. That every Amen. You know, that um, we are <clears throat> reading about things that we need to practice because this is how God wants it. So I really appreciate um, you know taking you know, I didn't didn't think that I wanted to lead any of these but as we looked at it a few uh, you know, weeks ago and we looked at all of the titles somehow that one grabbed me and maybe because, you know, uh, not maybe, but I know that in the past, I have been indulged, I have indulged in gossiping. Uh, maybe most of the hearer because of, you know, the kind of person that I am. And I would listen, but not want to hurt people's feelings. And so I just listen and I was not one to carry anything that I heard. I might share something with my sister, but say <laughs> But then that's still gossiping, you know? So like my grandfather used to tell us, bridle your tongue with a bridle. Well, mm -hmm. that's what these lessons are doing, teaching me to bridle my tongue. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed it. Yes. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. We enjoyed how you delivered it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Anybody well, else? Any uh, closing comments? Before we end in prayer, I would just like to say that um, this lady that wrote this book, Deborah Pegue, mm -hmm. when when she wrote that book, she was anointed. Oh yes, mm -hmm. to come up with you know to come mm -hmm. up exactly with the 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 words and the examples that she gave. That lady was anointed when she wrote that book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. And, you know, I feel a certain amount of importance that's coming through this study right here. And mm -hmm. it's not from one individual, it's from all, every individual that's sharing. Um, yeah. So I, I feel the anointing in this group as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that um, I can't really explain. Like, I, 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 that I, I guess the best way to explain it is anointed. Like, you know, it's not just because um, any of us are so great, but I think that God is pouring out, he opened up the windows of heaven and he's just pouring down his blessings on us. Wow. Yeah. That's the way I feel. And that's, that's the only way I can explain it, you know? Yeah. Um, it really is special and uh, I appreciate it more than a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one that feel that way, Minister Johnson. This is such a powerful, powerful group of people they're so highly anointed yeah. in fact I was just sitting back uh, mm -hmm. tonight just beaming um, as I do mm -hmm. many nights just beaming and just just absorbing it it's just such a powerful anointing among the people everybody that speaks in this group it's like they're all Bible scholars on the, in this group <laughs> <laughs> The Holy Spirit is moving. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I'm looking at your shirt that says bless it. Because yeah. sometimes bless. you just say bless. <laughs> Blessed assurance. When I saw that shirt, I'm like, oh <laughs> man, bless <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Indeed. Indeed. My husband has been listening. He's very shy. He doesn't like to come on to the screen, <laughs> but he accidentally came on a few minutes ago. But he's been he's been standing by listening to our 
blessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Amen. Yeah, he's yeah, been, that's been that overflow been, blessing right there. That's yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In case anybody was wondering who that was that came in down there. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> I could see this person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, with that being said, I'm going to ask everybody to please close your eyes, bow your head as we close tonight's Bible study out. We're going to open up our hearts and our minds to receive whatever it is that you still have to Mm. give to us, Father, because Mm. it's never over. This is going to continue to happen until the day we meet you. So, Father, Mm. we're asking that you continue to pour out your blessings upon us, your children, that yes. you continue to keep us safe and that you just be a hedge all around us, protect us. And Lord in heaven, most of all, continue to give us your anointings, give us your blessing. Yeah. And Father, most of all, we're asking that you just make your presence felt in our lives. Yes. Individually and collectively, we need you more than ever. We need you to help us with your tongue. We need you to help us with our thoughts. We need to help mm-hmm. you with action. So we, we know that you're right here. The presence of the Lord is right here. And Father, we yeah. ask that you continue to follow us all the days of our life. And in mm. every, yes. every environment, every uh, milieu that we go in, help us to be a representative, an ambassador for your kingdom. Yes. Father, a thousand tongues couldn't express enough gratitude mm. what you have given us, which is one another. Uh, yeah. we, we know we have you in our hearts and we'll, you'll never leave us or forsake us, but thank you for giving us yes. one another. Thank you for giving us thank this group. Yes, Lord. Thank you. All of our blessings. So mm. Lord, as we end this session, we're looking forward to the next and the next, and it just keep on getting gooder and gooder. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Heaven, every time we turn around, you just keep blessing us, and we're mm. going to be in mm. position to be, be blessed. Mm. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's in the yeah. name of Jesus that we say this prayer and receive the blessing. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Have a restful night, everybody. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, Larry. Hi. Larry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Tina, oh, Tina, seeing everybody Tina, next Wednesday. <laughs> Tina and I, we had we had White on on Sunday just by uh-huh. coincidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, thanks for that picture, Larry, of Uncle Martin on Tony. That yeah. was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. I, and we had we had White on. And I go, we could have went to the wedding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I thought we were going to say some more about that wedding. Was I wrong yeah. to say everything? Mm-hmm. Well, I can tell you it was um, it was beautiful. My niece asked everybody to wear white. And um, maybe about maybe two weeks before the wedding, she sent out a text message reminding us that the attire was strictly white. And she said, if you didn't show up in white, you couldn't come. Wow. <laughs> and, and we thought, whoa. We were saying, what a little bridezilla she's, she is, you know? So um, <laughs> Thursday, I went to the rehearsal with Marva and Ron because, you know, they're grandparents of the bride and they were part of the bridal party. And all of the bridesmaids were coming in. Everybody was so excited. And um, they were all coming in and one bridesmaid showed up with pink toenails, you know, pink polish. And she told her, she says, I asked you all to wear white toenail polish. So therefore, please exchange it by uh, Saturday. Tomorrow. (laughs) They all had the same makeup artists who did, uh, everybody's hair was the same. They were absolutely beautiful. beautiful. And when you walked in oh. that room, uh, they handed you a white mask with the, it says Turner to a Smith and the date. And everybody had their mask. And you walked wow. into all this white. 
Mm. And it then when beautiful. the wedding started, wow. and the um the grandparents came in and the parents and all of that, and then all of the bridesmaids. And when you looked in that room in that aura of white, it was wow. absolutely beautiful. Well, um, we, now I saw everybody except Marva and, and Ron, the grandparents. You didn't see me? No. You mean it was, it was on Zoom? Yes. But Marva has a nice picture that she took with, um, with not just with Ron, oh, but I with did her that picture. and yes. her grandson and my son. Yes, my yes. I saw that one before I saw Joyce's pictures. Yes. And they had a photo booth. So we were able to go to the photo booth and take pictures. And they had um, an acrylic, big acrylic stand as you walked into the reception room. And this stand had your table assignments on it. Engraved. Oh. So you just looked at the stand. Engraved. You know, what table you were oh, wow. And I'm thinking, these kids are something else. And, yeah. and they kept it on. The, the, the table assignments were right there on this beautiful glass. It looked like glass, but it's a crazy. So they're going to keep that, and right? That's going to be And you have your name and your table number, and you just went to that table. So they didn't have to have people manning it, you know. And I said to, to Sabaya, my granddaughter, I said, where did you find your, um, your uh, wedding planner? On Instagram. Wow. See, they advertise on Instagram. See, that's their new world. That's their world. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? And the one thing that they did not mention is that my second son was the officiant. He officiated oh, yes. the yes. Oh. Wow. So if you, you if my, you you want, took mine. <laughs> I was that? about to say that. <laughs> now, we're gonna say it, huh? But if if you want to see the wedding, I looked at it on the on the plane and looked at it here. There is, if you go to YouTube and in that little search, yeah, put in the hashtag sign. You know what that is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the pound sign. Turner, T U R N E R. T U R N E R. Two T O A A Smith. Turner to a Smith. Turner to a Smith. Yes. And that's on and when, YouTube. And it's on YouTube. And when you first, when it first comes up, the first hour and a half, it's the, the, the company is saying, please wait, we'll be with you in a moment. So what I do when I look at it is I touch that little red line, that little and red line at the bottom, and I slide it over I until it gets to about 1.30 and then I release it. And then I just watch it for a moment. And if you and then when it starts, it starts with the grandparents, you know, and, and those first persons coming down. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, oh, so Marva, what are they going to do with that big thing that they had engraved the the names in? I have no idea. <laughs> keeping it, in, it wasn't. It was only about uh, fifteen or maybe twenty by maybe fourteen by twenty or so. Yeah, maybe they'll keep the momentum. They might. It would. It would make a nice momentum. They, yeah. They, but they'll. They. Uh, I don't know if they'll keep it. But they what? planned that wedding. They did not plan. You know, normally a, a parents plan with you. Sabaya yeah. and Jason planned that wedding. They did not engage us, the, the parents or the grandparents in planning. And they, we were we were invited as a guest. <laughs> and. Her parents were a little more involved in the planning, you know, than 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 uh, anyone else. But uh, yeah. and her parents, I mean, his parents, his mother. But it was beautiful. I was yeah. there. Also, also, um, there was a lady standing beside me when um when the groom when they were walking in and all of this kind of stuff, and the lady say um she don't know that that's my niece, you know. So she says um. Um, Sabaya and Jason raised the bar for their friend's <laughs> wedding, but they're young, you know, so they got to do something like this or better. She, they, she said they're for, for two young people like them, they raised the bar because mm -hmm. that wedding was absolutely gorgeous. Wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And Great. when you entered the, the room where we ate, you know, the, the, um, Banquet, banquet hall. Banquet hall. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, God. They didn't know yes. where not to look. It was just they had their names uh, projected on the wall, Sabaya and Jason. Mm -hmm. And that whole wall behind them, they were the only ones at the reception table. The bridesmaids and those were sitting at regular tables, but they had um, all the flowers were all white. And they had a wall of white flowers. Flowers. Oh. Real flowers. It was so yeah. pretty. And they provided transportation to take us from the hotel to the venue mm -hmm. and picked us up. That we when we checked in at the hotel, we signed, you know, our name on a list, and you chose if you want to be on the three o'clock bus or the three thirty bus. And then <laughs> coming back, the buses came at you know um, a half hour intervals. So we didn't have to worry about driving or anything. And I oh, had wow. a pleasure because I, uh, on the way to the, res on to the way to the wedding, a lady that got on the bus sat with me in the front seat. And she shared with me how honored she was to be invited to the wedding. She mm -hmm. said that Jason and her son, Michael, were best friends from they were little kids. Yeah. They went off to high school, they went off to college. Her son finished his four years. Jason finished his four years. Her son got a really good job. I believe it was in Atlanta. And that's Jason also got a good job there. And he um, was just started a new job. Um, the day, I think she said it was the day after his birthday. His roommate brought him a cheesecake. It had peanuts in it. He's allergic to peanuts and he died. <laughs> uh -oh. the, it, she said that when they, they have a little baby and they named the baby Sloan, her middle name is Michael Noel. And Michael is the name of his friend who died. No. Oh. And he honored his friend by naming his baby Michael Noel. Mm -hmm. So this mother told me, she says, I am so honored that they would think of doing something like that to honor my son's name. And not only that, but at the reception, they recognized Michael and the grandparents that have already gone on. You know, they had like a, a little memorial for them, you know, so they thought of everything, everything. And this lady told me she just had back surgery and Ooh. she really should have her um, brace on over her white dress. But <laughs> I can't do that. I just have to <laughs> enjoy myself and stay as long as I can, you know. Then she showed me a picture of her son, you know. Wow. And I, I found out that her son was just as great a young man as Jason is. And about a, when I first met Jason and um, got to know him, I said to Marva, I really, really like Jason. And then when I watched him in a, about a year ago, when they started making all their plans and I saw how involved he was in every single detail, I said, he's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wonderful young man. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Even though I'm Margaret uh, shared the information that um, her son, Kari, did the um, officiating, he's the same person who officiated our wedding as well. Oh, and yeah. he, did, he did an excellent job on, on both. On both, both mm -hmm. so, um, he, he's, a, he's an anointed speaker as well. Wow. Yes, he is. He would only expect that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I I could I could never do what Kari, Kari does. Kari is so talented. I just look at him and think, man, that the, the Lord sure poured it in you when He created you. He's well, isn't talented. everybody in your family? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know what? Yes, because Psalm one thirty nine tells us that we all are wow. wonderfully made by God. So mm -hmm. yeah. And all of us on this on this uh, gallery view that I'm looking at, we're all wonderfully made by him. Amen. Yes. 
Yes, we have. Okay. Thing I was just telling the research, ain't nobody getting off yet. Nobody getting off your mind. <laughs> no, we <laughs> might be making it. Stop. Stop. No, 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 it's fine. No, 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 don't, don't rush off. Don't rush off at all. Um, you guys, we have one minute before Joyce and I. Joyce is nearer to you now, so she's going to get the flogging. I don't <laughs> get the lip service. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's not for books. Oh. Wow. Yeah. But if you, you know, it, it'll be our pleasure if you could watch it. Uh, okay. The email this. addresses are in the chat box in case somebody didn't uh. know. Everybody put their email address in the chat box. Yeah. No. Oh, thank you. Let me. I put mine in. Uh, let me see. I just put mine in. Okay, is somebody going to send this out, or, or how are we doing this? I don't. Or I don't know anything about chat boxes. Once you put something in it, uh, I can write them down. Okay. because I have access to them. I, I can write okay. them down. I'll do okay. the playback. All right. Figure it out. Ferris, who's next week? Uh, Uncle Uncle Mort. Uncle Mort. Okay. Uh -oh. Me. <laughs> You're, on. You're on. Yeah. So we have that big brother. The the meddling the meddling time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so don't talk, don't. I know you guys. When we said meddling, y'all thought about somebody in your head who's a meddler, huh? <laughs> sure did. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna check out you guys. You guys can continue on, Mama Jordan. I'm gonna leave you as the um the host. And um, I'm saying good night. I have to. Eat. I'm saying good night. My daughter just told me dinner is ready. <laughs> yeah, I gotta eat too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a blessed week. Um, have a blessed love week. you all. Do the same. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. So what's the dinner? <laughs> okay. Okay.